Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're okay and I seriously hope that you are taking care of yourselves. So today's video is going to be a chilled, kind of like a chit chat get ready with me updated makeup tutorial. I really want to talk about self-love and self-care in this video whilst I do my makeup. I have been surrounding myself with as much positivity as I can even though it's really difficult because I miss my friends and family so freaking much. I really wanted to do an updated makeup tutorial and show you guys what type of makeup look I like to go for whilst being in lockdown and you know I know a lot of people's lifestyles are different and a lot of people are probably thinking you know what's the point in wearing makeup and doing your hair and everything else which is totally understandable but for me the reason why I like to get ready even though I am literally not going anywhere no zoom calls no meetings I still like like to spend that half an hour of just getting ready because it kind of makes me feel better it's a little bit of taste of normality so yeah I really do hope that you enjoy this chill and get ready with me so the first thing I like to do is I like to prep my lips before I do my makeup look and I discovered a new lip plumping product that I really like so this is from a brand called Nabla I think that's how you say it Nabla yeah Nabla and this is the Viper lip plumping lip gloss love the packaging so much I think it's so cute and I love how there's a snake on there even though snakes terrifies me um that's a, like a little fun fact about me but yeah I usually use the Too Faced lip plumping glosses I have been using them for so many years but I thought do you know what let me try this brand out and it's amazing I love it so much and it comes in this applicator you don't need a lot this also acts as a hydrating lip balm as well as a lip plumper as well so yeah I have gotten into a habit of always prepping my lips before I officially do my makeup routine and the reason why is because I, ha I have quite severe dry lips so I'm always carrying lip balms with me whenever I go to the grocery store because that's like the only place I go out to even around my apartment as well there's always like a lip balm in every room <laughs> in my apartment in a couple of minutes hopefully you'll see a slight difference in the size of my lips. Next step is brows. So this whole entire makeup look is all about the brows, is all about looking fresh, glowy, healthy, is all about radiating from the inside and outside. So this is what this whole entire makeup look is about. And I have been obsessed with fluffy brows for the past maybe six, seven months. And yeah, I wanted to show you guys how to use the Anastasia Brow Freeze. This is my own personal way of using the brow products. I've been watching so many people use this brow products and for some reason, my way is a little bit different compared to everyone else's. So I've got myself a cotton round. I have some water. I always have water on my beauty desk. I don't know why. I like to spray the cotton round with water. And what I like to wipe off all of the excess oils and creams and all of that stuff. The reason why I do this step is because I use this brow product and my brows just kept falling down. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I thought, you know what? Let me just like wipe off the excess greasiness on my brow hair because that's probably the reason why. So yeah, I um, I did that and now this brow product works like an absolute dream. So good and it's much better than soap brows. I feel like soap brows are a bit too weak for my hair because my hair, as you guys can see, my brow hairs naturally go down. They don't go up or straight or anything like that. So yeah, they're quite stubborn and thick and heavy. Brows are dry, which is nice. And I'm gonna get the ABH spoolie and angled brow brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up the brow gel. Some people like to get the lid and kind of like spread the brow gel all over the spoolie. As for me, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna explain why. So I'm gonna do this brow first. I like to put quite a bit of product on first on my brow hairs and then distribute the product across my brows because I find that method works really well for me. I think it's because my brows are quite thick and stubborn. So yeah, this works really 
well for me this method and instantly it just like lifts it all up and as you can see my brows are nice and upwards and it was so quick and easy to do I definitely prefer this method that I discovered and what I like to do is I like to just press down the brow hairs that way they stay there okay I know I look a little crazy but once I fill it in, it looks less crazy. I don't know if you guys can tell, but my lips have gotten a little bit bigger. Oh, I love lip plumping gloss so much. I am terrified of lip filler. I don't know, I've seen so many videos of like my friends and other people get lip filler done and I just can't, I just can't do it myself. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the brows. I love this brow product so much. This is the precisely my brow and this is in the shade six, but for some reason on the packet it says gray and I don't know why. <laughs> I have tried other brow products, but whenever I use a brow product and it's in the shade black, or ebony or dark it comes out too dark so this benefit precisely my brow even though this is the darkest shade they have in their collection it doesn't come out super dark it comes out as a light black so that's why I like this brow product so much because all of the other brow products that I have tried black just comes out too dark on me and I was a part of Hung's masterclass so Laura Mercier hosted a masterclass and they used him as the makeup artist to teach us you know how to do makeup and he shared his secrets and he said that he likes to use lighter brow products because it kind of makes the whole look look expensive youthful and radiant and I was like oh my god that's like my favorite type of makeup honestly no matter how long you've been doing makeup you always learn something about makeup and being a part of that masterclass was such a pleasure because I love Hong so much. Like you rarely see East Asian makeup artists work with really big Western celebrities. Like he's Selena Gomez's makeup artist. Like he is like the, the top makeup artist for her. And that just says a lot as well. So what I like to do is I like to just fill in my brows by just doing upward motions. So before I used to do a line at the bottom and then blend it out and then do up with motions. But now, because I use the brow freeze or the got to be hair gel, I no longer have to do that anymore because it's it's not needed. So what I like to do is I just like to just go over and fill in any areas of my brows. And I just go in with a light hand. That's another thing that I've learned over the years is that you don't need to have a hard hand when doing makeup. Ideally, you wanna go in lightly. And then on the tail, I kind of go a little bit down. I do draw a little line at the bottom and I just kind of just go upwards. This is the before and this is the after. Honestly, this is probably the best brow look I have ever done for myself and yeah, moving on to the base finally. So just so that you guys know, I don't wear foundation on days where I'm not working. So my working routine is I probably film content for my TikTok and Instagram two to three times a week, but those four days out of the week, I don't wear foundation because I don't know, I'm really enjoying wearing less makeup on my days off. As for before the lockdown and the pandemic, whenever I did have meetings with brands and PRs or if I'm seeing friends or whatever, I would wear foundation, but I think when things do go back to normal, which I really do hope and pray it does in the next few months, let's just pray. I don't think I would wear foundation whenever I would go out because I'm really enjoying that minimal fresh makeup look. So a primer that I have been really loving is the NARS Smooth and Protect Primer and this has SPF 50 in it which is amazing. I know a lot of people don't wear SPF at home but I do recommend in wearing it because the sun can get in contact with you through windows and I did go through a phase of like not wearing SPF at home. Home, and I did see a very big difference within my skin like for instance I'm getting more of these like little I wouldn't say freckles they're definitely not freckles but they're like a it's like hyperpigmentation it's like post inflammatory uh, hyperpigmentation from the spots and if I did wear my SPF I wouldn't have had gotten these so yeah I have gotten into a routine to use this I would usually wear my Elemis anti-aging 
smooth primer but that hasn't got spf in it has it got spf i'm not entirely sure but this one's got spf 50 this nars one which is so good <laughs> next step is a concealer so this is the new laura mercier concealers this is uh, the concealer that hung used in his masterclass with laura mercier that i watched and guys i was very blown away and for the longest time ever i've always said nars and laura mercier are one of my favorite premium brands whenever it comes to face makeup but what I love about these concealers is that it literally looks like skin and I have never seen a concealer work like this and I know I sound very dramatic and it just sounds a bit like I think you sound like a setup I'm not this video is not sponsored by any of the brands that I'm using in this video uh, although I wish it was <laughs> I really love these concealers and it's just so different because well it's different and it's not different because the component is is that it comes in a stick form and whenever I think of stick concealers I'm just like that's just so like 2005 it does work though this concealer is insane so there's two different sides of the concealer so there is a correcting side and a brightening side as well so correcting is to counteract with any unevenness on your skin but you don't have to wear both of the concealers you can wear one or the other it's completely up to you Hong made it very clear that makeup is very personal you wear it how you want to wear it you know as long as you're happy with your makeup look the process does not matter which is so freaking true I'm gonna use the correcting side and the illuminating side just to show you guys and I like to use the shade 3N it kind of matches my um skin skin colour. So what I like to do is I like to apply it right in the inner corner of my eyes because that's where it's really dark and to help brighten it up I like to apply the concealer right in there. And that's literally how much I put on, which is not a lot. You can use a beauty blender if you want, but I feel like with this consistency, this concealer, it needs a firm like blending brush so this is the sigma p89 brush and this is the bake precision precision brush oh my god i can't talk i feel like beauty blenders work so well with liquid foundations concealers blushes highlighters but when you're working with a makeup product that's got like a a i want, I want to say like a firmness <laughs> a brush is more ideal this concealer is just there's nothing like this in the market i really truly think that i mean if there is please let me know because i would definitely love to get more more concealers that literally looks like my skin and then I'm just gonna go in with the brightening side this is just to help make my under eyes look fresh <laughs> and look like I've had a lot of sleep which is actually true I had had a lot of sleep but I still have bags underneath my eyes brightening side has got a little bit of a teeny bit of illuminosity it's very subtle it's not like noticeably different compared to the color correcting side but it does add that hint of freshness to the skin and then to hide this little friend what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the NARS concealer this is the soft matte concealer and this is really pigmented I'm just gonna really help cover the spot the blusher that I'm using is the elf putty blush and I think this is in the shade Tahiti not entirely sure because it doesn't say on the bottle but um, yeah I love this blush so much because it's got a slight like glistening glow and I've been loving highlighters that's not chunky glitter type of glowiness I love using products that kind of has that that sweat look even though it's not sweat <laughs> Kind of like glass skin so i'm just applying this pretty much all over my cheeks and the reason why i do that is because i don't know there's something there's something nice about having a lot of blusher on and also blush is one of those products that does disappear if you ever feel like you're wearing too much blusher you can just go ahead and get your damp beauty blender and just pick up the excess and it's just got this really nice flush look i completely forgot to contour my face so i'm gonna go ahead and use a laura mercier concealer just gonna contour my nose a little bit. I was doing my blush and I was like, I feel like I'm missing something and it's obviously the contour part. So it looks a little bit backwards, but we can still make it work. So something that I don't really talk to you guys about is contouring the eyes. So because this is a fluffy brows type of no makeup makeup look, I really want to show you guys that sometimes you don't have to wear eyeshadow in order to enhance your eyes. You can just pick up a little bit of your favourite contour product 
get a brush, any brush that you want, and just go over and just lightly put it in the crease of the eyes and then connect it to your nose. And I find this really helps shape and enhance the eyes, especially when you do this trick and you apply your favorite mascara or you put on your favorite false eyelashes. It kind of gives off that very natural type of um, look. Well, not natural, but it kind of gives you that little bit of enhancement to the face when you do a bit of contouring on the eyes. I learned this from Makeup by Mario actually and he explained it so well when you contour your nose it kind of makes sense to add a little bit of contour to the crease of your eye and then all together it kind of like makes everything more infused i guess i can say yeah brings the whole face together i'm going to use a charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish in number two i'm going to pick up the sigma tapered highlighter brush. I like to use this as a setting brush because I can set straight under my eye and the reason why I'm not using translucent powder is because sometimes I feel like I don't need translucent powder whenever I do a very lightweight makeup look. So this powder is so nice and it, it really is very lightweight as well which I love. So yeah I'm just gonna set in areas of my face where I get really oily so that would be surprisingly under my eyes I get oily, center of my face, a little bit on my nose and my forehead as well. I like to keep my forehead quite matte. I have been obsessed with the soft matte makeup look where you look radiant, you look glowy but you don't have a lot of highlighter on and sometimes people forget that you don't need to wear highlighter in order to look glowy. A soft matte look just makes you looks so I don't know it's kind of like a like a filter in a very very weird way but yeah I love the soft matte makeup look it's so pretty it's so funny how like over the years your perception on makeup changes like I used to think oh more highlighter the better but now I'm like no less highlighter the better now you might dislike me when I do this next step but I am a true believer that it is okay to put cream products on top of powder it depends on the makeup look and it depends how much powder you have used <laughs> oh i know you guys are probably gonna like scream at me when i do this step so this is the pat mcgrath duo highlighter however i only like the balm side the other side is fine there's nothing wrong with it it's just that i prefer this side because it's so creamy and what i love about this is every time i use this it doesn't make me look too sweaty so it's not like a chunky glitter highlighter it's just it's just a sweaty highlighter it's the only way i can describe it so i like to warm it up on the back of my hands first and then i get my ring finger pile it on and then i just go ahead apply this under my brows i kind of do like a c and the reason why I do this is because when I move my head, you can see this whole entire glow. And it's so subtle and I love it. I love this minimal makeup look. The next step is mascara. So yeah, I am doing a makeup look without any lashes, which is so interesting because I know I got eyelashes with Idol, which I absolutely adore and love, but sometimes it's nice to just wear mascara. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I know not a lot of people wear false eyelashes, so, and I was looking at all of my makeup tutorials and I was just like, I rarely do any tutorials for people who doesn't wear false eyelashes. So yeah, this tutorial is for the people who don't wear false eyelashes. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I did give myself an LVL perm lash lift thingy. I got this kit from Amazon and it really works. I'm actually so shook that it works. I do use a lash serum every night as well just to help grow them and I see a little difference since using a lash serum. The lash serum that I use is from Cell. It's called Sally's Beauty Lash Brow and Serum. It's so good. So yeah, I'm going to use the Too Faced Better Than Mascara. I'm not going to say the S word because, you know, I don't want to get demonetized. So I like to start from the root of my lash and just curl upwards. Love this mascara. I've been using this mascara for so many years. I just love how this mascara, it lengthens and it kind of thickens, but not too much thickens my lashes. And because my lashes are so tiny, if I have really thick, short lashes, it just looks really weird. So yeah, that's why I like this mascara. Slight difference. I love it, love this mascara. Onto the lips now, I did wipe off my lip balm because I've noticed that whenever I apply lip liner and lipstick on top of my lip balm, it kinda, you know, goes a little bit slippery and messy. My favorite lip liner is Sweet Tea by Morphe and I love to pair it up with Gucci lipstick they met in Argentina. These two are meant to be 
together and they're just so gorgeous together because sweet tea is like a warm brown with a hint of slight orangey undertone it's so beautiful and then pairing it up with this lipstick which is more on the darker coral side it just works so well together and yeah it just really suits my skin tone as well so if you're like a similar skin tone to me oh you have to try this lip combo oh you have to try this lip combo And then to set everything, we're gonna use the Anastasia Dewy Setting Spray. Always give your setting sprays a little shake. <laughs> God, it feels amazing to put setting spray on. And this helps give my skin a little bit of radiant glow without making me look too crazy and sweaty. Just done my hair and I completely forgotten about this step. And I really wanna share it with you guys because I feel like it's a necessity whilst getting ready during lockdown and putting a little bit of body shimmer oil just kinda, I don't know, it just brings your look to the next level. Obviously it depends what type of top that you're wearing, but I like to wear um, comfortable vest tops whilst I'm at home. And I love this product. This is the Patrick Tar Body oil and it just smells amazing oh and it's really hydrating as well and it just gives off this really lovely glow oh my god it smells amazing it's like sweets it's very subtle it's not meant to be super in your face type of body glow and it just gives off that really subtle shine i hope you guys enjoyed this little quarantine glow up video thank you so much for joining me and it was really nice to just sit down and play with makeup i feel like i haven't done this on my channel for a really long time hope to see you guys in my next video and take care of yourselves bye